Can we have everybody come up and sit closer together because we're all friends and want to meet each other, please? So this is my first time video log blogging. I hope I get it right. We're here at the first day of the DIY summit, 24-7, a DIY video summit. Here we are today at a moment where we can't even imagine life without YouTube, Google Video, iMeme, um, Rever, Stage 6, much less the old timers like BitTorrent, DeviantArt, Flickr, and Photobucket. But on the other hand, we're clearly in a really early moment in the transition, and that was really the idea behind the event, that if we could convene the movers and shakers in this space early and often, that we might actually be able to change the world. My name is John Stout. I'm the general manager at Free Speech TV, which is a full-time progressive television network. My name is Tiffany Chang, and I'm a co-founder of the Persistatory Culture Foundation. Howard Reingold, the no notorious online hanger-outer and instigator. My name is Francesca Coppa. I'm director of film studies at Muhlenberg College. My name is David Sasaki. My name is Mindy Faber. It's Dean Jansen. Hi. Mark Davis. Joey Ito, internet poster boy. Uh, I'm a vitter, I'm a fan, and I'm also on the board of a new organization called the Organization for Transformative Works. Uh, John C. Lee Brown, um, known widely as JSB, is a chief of confusion. And I'm with Global Voices Online, which is a website that aggregates and collects and editorializes content from all over the world. Johai Begler, uh, and I quote again, people think it's multidisciplinary, but I'm, I'm really undisciplined. I'm Michael Wesch, <laughs> Kansas State University. When I think about political remix video, um, I think of it as an increasingly relevant and important form of DIY media. Um, I think about it in terms of uh, how it can challenge dominant media myths and media messages. So some of it is about remixing government institutions. Some of it is about talking, commenting directly on the media itself. Um, and then some of it is about more social issues, um, whether that be sexuality, gender, race, class. The goals of my curation, um, to show the most amazing videos ever. There's been a lot of talk about this next song. This song. It's not a rebel song. This song. It's Sunday. Like Sunday. This conference looks at a very particular moment today and how digital media is is changing the way in, in which we produce and consume media and, and it is changing the kinds of media that are being produced and the ways in which media is being, are being used. This is not unlike a period 40 years ago when the first Sony Porta Packs were introduced and I wanted to create a program that provided that historical context for today's movement and moment um, and connect the dots between the introduction of the Porta Pack and today and showing how uh, artists and activists are using media as a tool for advancing social change. In, in the old days, two years ago, um, we used to think of it being kind of a push media, mass media, and a pull media. Um, but how these two start to interact becomes very, very significant. Joint collective action actually starts to build the basis of a now of a distributed imagination. I think having a legal framework that's very easy to understand, that's automated, um, is a very important part of a distributed network. So when you take a picture with your camera phone, it, you should have the Creative Commons license that you want in it, it should have your name in it, it should have your link in it. When you upload it to the web, it should know. When you remix it using iSpot or whatever, it should be added to it. And all of the files should have kind of a genealogy of where all this stuff is. Check for compatibility. If you want to break the law, it should let you break the law. It's that range of incentives that inspire people to create and to share and to add value to the ecosystem, which includes everything from just having someone comment on my photo or use it to making money on it. And while I agree that we should try to fight for fair use, it's not a very practical thing to lean on as an individual do-it-yourself video person. And the history of, of DIY and remix culture is being written right now. It's being written by a lot of people here at this conference. If this is the world of DIY video, we were doing it for ourselves a long time ago. Um, our community dates back to 1975. So I want to show um, um, a, a VCR bit, or part of a VCR bit, bit called Oh Boy, made by some members of the California crew in the uh, late 80s. All of my love, all of my kissing, you don't know 
what you've been a missing, oh boy. Oh boy. When you're with me, oh boy. Oh boy. The whole world can see that you oh were a man for me. Um, so in, in a way, I think um, the, the bidders have kind of managed to put themselves onto the screen as a female audience by turning these kinds of isolated women from each episode into kind of a collective. This conference represents cross-pollination of communities. So um, we are live action music bidders, but they're anime music bidders and machinima music bidders. And there's a little bit of looking over the shoulder to be like, oh, I want to do what he does. I want to use that effect. Although AMVs are a bit similar to bidding in that um, we both remix found footage, um, the two communities uh, developed uh, relatively separately from each other. Uh, the AMV community was uh, somewhat fortunate in that um, the commercial anime industry in the mid-90s and before was fairly tiny in North America, so um, there was nobody really, like there was no very large uh, industry to crack, on, crack down on what we did. I am here to present the Machinima program, uh, showcasing how films are made inside of virtual environments. I mean, are we the product of some cosmic coincidence, or is there really a God watching everything, you know, with a plan for us and stuff? Well, to be honest, I think Machinima represents uh, the future of animated film. I don't know, man. Once the technology uh, advances, and uh, it becomes, you know, it's becoming more and more sophisticated over the years. It's only a matter of time before it actually hits the same level of, say, an animated production of today. I mean, why are we out here in this canyon? Oh, uh, yeah. Now I understand What you tried to say to me And how you suffered for your sanity and how you tried to set them free They would not listen, they did not know how Perhaps they'll listen now I ended up actually trying to um, underscore a pattern of works that had mystery in it and um, um, mystique and ambiguity and um, were open to interpretation The sun. The very curious thing for me about curating this program was how difficult it was to reach a lot of people on the internet. And that to me seemed like a really weird anachronism for what the net was about. I chose the selection uh, based on personal connections. Um, many of these people, uh, almost all of them in this program, um, have become my really close friends uh, and collaborators. I've slept on their couches, I've played with their kids, I'm about to get married to one of them. <laughs> um, video blogging can be anything that the creator wants it to be. Um, some say that it's just video on a blog. What I come to this for is for a little calm. I want to feel connected. I want to not be so isolated. And I want also some affirmation of the craziness that I feel. And I want to see that in other people. Instead of having to turn on the television or look at the newspaper or turn on the radio and try and get some kind of connection through that, because it's not there. We often think of media as just tools, and I think there's a certain danger in that, in that they really are, like, as Marshall McLuhan used to say, they're like extensions of ourselves, right? And we actually sort of co-opt them as part of ourselves. And when that happens, I think that we change.
when a new technology enables a new literacy, what is needed for new forms of collective action is not only the means of production and the means of distribution, but some kind of means of finding the good stuff. There needs to be some space that everything travels through. Now, whether there needs to be profit or non-profit, I'm, I, I'm agnostic. I think there are arguments for both. We want to make sure that um, that space is open source and open standards and that everybody has the opportunity to have a channel and no one company um, dominates the space or controls the space over anybody else. So I'm going around in different countries and giving small grants away to community groups who want to start up new media projects. So now they're starting to blog, they're starting to video blog, they're starting to post audio files, interacting with Web 2.0. A lot of academics are studying youth and their online culture and their uh, interaction and their belief systems and how they, you know, there's all this kind of, uh, kind of research about them as subjects. In the opinion of the youth that I work with, YouTube is immensely important to their everyday lives. They find it entertaining and very creative and inventive, inspiring, politicizing, affirming, interactive, authentic, stupid. Mediocre, full of haters, escapist, liberating, hysterical, and probably more importantly, it's so not school. The revolution will be televised by me. 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 And me. In a radically uncertain and rapidly innovating and changing environment, the only thing you can do is not plan, but learn. And plan to learn and change and adapt. And I'm just learning a lot about, about the tools that are available out there and about what other people are doing when they turn the webcam on themselves and decide to make a movie. What are they going to talk about? And, and some neat editing techniques too. For those of us who study you know, digital media, Pretty much all of the great heroes are here. It's lovely being in this environment, meeting with people of like mind, who are ex exploring where video is going and how it's going to it's going to evolve into the future. I think you'll see the influence of the of the conference in, in bids. I thought it was interesting to see the academic side mashed together with the more DIY video stuff. I hope that there will be more events like this all over the country. Twenty ten is to have HD quality video recording connected by three G network. Very large distributed groups of people in the billions sharing media with each other around the world in real time, which is three to five years away. I am being 